everybody, welcome back to the feature crew. Christmas came early, 03 is here, so we have a step change in reasoning, and we're getting ready to test that for you, see if it lives up to the hype. Benchmarks look good. Jacob, any context you want to give us here? Yep, just that it's a big week for OpenAI. They are releasing both a full version of 03, which will replace the 01 series of models, and then uh, 04 mini, which will replace 03 mini as the quicker, lower compute, yet high reasoning variant. So we're excited to uh, try the new, what is claimed to be the new best model available. All right, so here we are. Uh, as you might guess, we're going to start with our our planetary uh, planetary test here, see if we can get it to generate an even better planet. We are expecting it to do quite well here. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. We'll drop our big prompt as always. Uh, we'll link the prompt in the chat if you want to try it yourself. But essentially we are asking it to make a procedurally generated planet. We want some controls over things like the atmosphere and the clouds, rotation speed. Uh, and we want it to output it as a single HTML file mostly for the purpose of testing. Uh, but we are quickly reaching a state where the models are so good we might hit a limit on HTML files. We'll see. Uh, let's send it. And off it goes. So in the past, we've seen pretty good adherence to our prompt. But we, we've seen a, like terrain be able to be generated, sometimes atmosphere, sometimes clouds, sometimes good water. What we're hoping with this advanced model and the sort of heavyweight reasoning is that it's able to really adhere to the prompt and get a lot of those features in the first shot. Well, it actually completed the request, so let's see. Hey! Okay. Things so are happening. Very interesting. What's going on on the, on the terrain? You got some pink. So in some ways... Oh. Oh, oh, there we go. That was the sea level. Okay. Okay. Now Whoa. Okay. So, so the first ball. thing the first things I'm noticing is there is some sort of water depth shader going on. Yep. And and some very interesting whoa with like the green and the blue gradient and then there's definitely like moving shadows. I'm wondering if that's clouds. We don't have cloud height. Maybe it can add that. Oh oh, and look at the atmosphere. Yeah, let's try to. Okay, this is a pretty impressive result. I think for context, it took us a little while to get here. We're, we're going to cut most of that out, but. Uh, we ran a bunch of prompts, and every time it tried to use Canvas, the thing broke. So our recommendation so far is if you're using O3 to code, do not use Canvas. No, do not use Canvas. But this is quite impressive right now. Like, this is definitely the best, best water shader we've seen. Atmosphere has some glitches, but is cool. That's basically on par with the best we've seen. Uh, and the terrain is looking great. I'm also noticing that there's no... Chris, if you keep going, like, can you see if there's any noticeable pinch point where the pole would be no okay so it looks like we can look into the code again we'll put these uh artifacts up but it's looking like it did a better implementation for mapping the noise to the code it also I'm... seems to have some notion of the equator because you can see the mountains are gray up top we start getting more lush mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some of that's height i imagine but no it's definitely they use biome assignment based on uh coordinates for sure Okay, this is a this is a great result. Very happy to see it, considering we were struggling with Canvas uh, there for a minute. So I think yeah, the other thing to call out is we got a better result in a temporary chat. Now that could be because we have a history of giving it this test. They might be times. getting confused. Yep. So uh, try temporary chat if you're falling into similar problems. Kind of sets the resets everything, makes it a clean slate. Uh, that helps out a lot. Yeah, we were a little nervous there about O3 for a second, but uh, seeing this this water and the shader and the, the way it mapped noise to the to the planet is very encouraging. <laughs> and we're starting to see a, a better result than we've seen before. So uh, very good. The, the water shader especially is wild. Yes. That is super cool. Okay, let's, we can iterate on this one. This one has yep. less. Yep. All right, let's definitely, let's definitely see how far we can push this. We'll give it some feedback and we'll see what it's able to improve. We've attached an image of what we currently have um, and we've pointed out some of the issues that we were noticing as we were walking through the initial result. So we're asking for more control over cloud and atmosphere height and updates to how they're rendered to make sure that they're visible. We could see that they were both semi-visible but not fully visible. And then uh, we want more biomes to make the whole planet a little more interesting. Awesome. Send it. Okay. Separate. Tropical rainforest, Savannah. Definitely adding some more detailed biomes. Let's type it out the shader. Terrain generation definitely got better. Like I'm noticing some like, you know, more distinct mountains and hills. And, oh, you can see the bands, like the, the latitude-based bands. Yeah. A little desert happening. It's nice. I think clouds are still borked entirely, though. It's nothing's happening if I crank cloud height to the moon. I can make the elevation really low, and I can make sea level really low. You can see the bands super clearly now. I do wonder. It's hard to tell if they're... Yeah. Um... Well, I don't know where the clouds are. i got to be honest. All right. Well, I, you know, I think it's interesting. It seems like it lost 
the clouds in there. It didn't it didn't follow all of our feedback uh, in terms of getting the atmosphere and the clouds to all work, uh, but it did improve terrain generation, so we're going to push it. Feel free to find the artifact when we post it online and see if you can get it to add clouds. We're going to keep pushing it. Uh, we've done this on the channel before. We're going to ask it to go down to first person and make this kind of a full game. We're going to ask for trees and rocks and the ability to collect resources. I have less faith than I thought I would. I got to be honest. I'm like nervous this is going to just destroy itself. We'll see. Uh, is it done? Yep. <laughs> Let's, Let's send see what it. it's able to do. We, this, is the, this is sort of the challenge mode historically, and so we're excited to see what it does. Is there an error? <laughs> Probably. All right, we're going to give it the error and uh, hope it, it makes it to a full game. All right. Buckle up. Here we go. Button. Send it. Whoa! Whoa. Things are happening. Okay, we here exist. we go. Oh, I go <laughs> way fast. The trees are massive. Oh, my God. Okay. Can I? Oh, uh -oh. boy. I'm just, I'm just a floating camera. Oh, oh, oh my. I, I am collecting them. Oh, you are? <laughs> I, I think. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I've collected it. Okay, let's give it a little bit of feedback. Cool, so we're asking for some feedback. We're asking, I mean, it did it did a, you know, it got something that worked. It pulled this down to first person, but uh, obviously everything was a bit incoherent. The trees and the rocks weren't connected to the terrain. The player wasn't rotating with the terrain. So we're asking for those improvements as like a final conclusion to our coding test here. Uh, just in terms, Chris, like, as as this is loading, do we ha have thoughts? I think it's like, what we were saying before is that it's a little strange that OpenAI is saying that these models are strictly better than their predecessors, and uh, the results we are getting were not strictly better. Uh, we went through a bunch of iterations, we had to redirect the model a bunch of times, and even then, we still aren't really seeing clouds work properly, and we have seen models in the past get clouds. That said, this model has done things that we haven't seen other models do in the past, like being able to nail most of the features in the first shot and being able to get a cool atmosphere shader and water shader. We are seeing some glimmers of more intelligence, but the strictly better thing we're not seeing with this specific test. We are interested in what you guys see in your own testing, so please share in the comments. We have a result. Let's see it. Let's Final try. shot 03 on coding. Let's see what you did. Okay, it did fix the atmosphere. Okay, I am walking oh, on the surface. Those are the clouds. Hey, clouds exist. Clouds made it. We got clouds. We got clouds. I mean, it's like the trees aren't aren't still uh, properly aligned, but the, it fixed the clouds. The atmosphere looks awesome from from first person. Like, I, this this is not an easy thing to do, an atmosphere like this. So yeah, like this is this is starting to become something that we could actually build off of. We're starting to really see the intelligence of of O three of O three here. So again, it's it's not perfect, um, I but. It. <laughs> but there are really cool things happening here. So let's move on to our business reasoning test. So this is the business reasoning test. Uh, viewers of the channel, this should be familiar. But we have this long file that contains a lot of information. It's a deep research result. It contains a ton of information about the currently available models, currently available agents, their benchmark performance. And what we're going to ask O3 here to do is to be an analyst at this fictional company called Turing Labs. And based on all this data that deep research gathered, do analysis, make projections, and then finally make recommendations about what this fictional company should use in terms of models and agents and what their strategy should be moving into the future. Future. Awesome. Send it. All right. So the first thing we're noticing here, this is our initial result. It focused in, even though we told it to include analysis for agents, it focused really in on the models. And beyond that, it only has some of the most recent models. So we dug through the deep research data and O3 in deep research mode had missed the new models uh, and it had missed some of the requests that we made for analysis about agents. That being said, it did make some great recommendations about agents, talking about specific agent frameworks, and then made some very in-depth recommendations spanning agent architecture and model use. And so we were seeing the glimmers of intelligence here, and but we were concerned about the, the missing data and the missing analysis. And so we, we've done a follow-up prompt now, and we're asking specifically for like extra attention on OpenAI's latest models and analysis about agents, and we'll come back with that final result. Okay, so like Jacob said, we said, hey, please make pro projections and charts about agents, not just models. Also search for the most recent models from OpenAI and update the model charts and recommendations. You'll notice right at the top, it thought for two minutes, but it also conducted 13 searches and cited 30 sources in that thinking time. So this is where we're seeing sort of deep research as a standalone feature might go away. And so now deep research is a functionality of O3, or at least some version of deep research. Research and analysis might be an interesting way to look at it. So moving on to these actual charts, 
the first chart is far improved. This is a, a, it tells a great story. It's yep. uh, mapping cost versus performance. This is super actionable. And we can start to see uh, the most recent models who clump up in the top right of that chart, which is exactly what we would expect. Looking at maximum context window, this is the same chart as before, but contains more information about newer models. And so you can see there's, there's less of a big drop off uh, yeah, for the old yeah, models yeah. and that the new models are more uh, on a larger order of magnitude here in context length. Agents task success rate. We got a new chart. We got a new chart. And this is, this is much more in depth uh, or much more actionable. I would say, let's see. Wow. Devin get wrecked. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, you would have to dive in and see like, oh, when were these benchmarks taken? What version of Devin, what model was backing it? Uh, but it, this is super interesting. And then past and projected agent performance, it's graphing. Let's see what it shows as the metric, uh, best in class agent task success. And it's graphing that over time. Now, this is a pretty smoothed over chart, right? Because what is task success percent and on what set of tasks? Uh, but it is interesting to see it follow our instructions of, of graphing performance and then extending that into the future and doing a little bit of a projection there. So as always, we'll upload these artifacts and you can dive into the actual code and see how it was projecting. Uh, and see if you agree with that, but cool to see it following the instructions. It also then, updated its implications, which is fun. Whoa, whoa. Okay, looking at that first which model to default, this is by far a more in-depth re uh, recommendation than we've ever seen. It's talking about specific models based on their context and their, their cost for performance, but then citing a specific capability of the responses API. Instead of just saying, oh, you should route to O3 for hard tasks, it's suggesting a specific situation in which you should route and how you can do that with the tools that OpenAI has made. That is a far more useful recommendation, even just this first one, than I think we've ever seen in this test. Absolutely. Uh, and then it continues with these sorts of recommendations, citing specific models uh, and specific implementation stacks, and then sort of cross-referencing them and making recommendations based on both factors. I also like to see it staying more product neutral than, uh, you know, check out our Firebase video if you want to see a model do the opposite of that. But mm -hmm. when it says build on OpenAI's agent SDK for tool organization, but keep logic in Langchain to stay vendor neutral. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I, I am noticing that there is notes on its trend projection. Again, this is way more in depth than in the past. Usually we've seen some linear projection. And here it's talking about like it, it I'm imagining if we looked through the chain of thought that it calculated this uh, frontier success value from the past. And then it creates a model using a slowing sigmoid that reaches 90%. And then it's talking about it's like, why did it choose the sigmoid? Well, because it thinks that remaining tasks will require real world grounding and tool reliability and that that will be a longer tail. So it's really starting to make like specific recommendations and models. Like we're seeing in a way that maybe we didn't see a massive jump in the coding test that we did. I'm starting to see this massive jump in the business test here. Yeah, this is, I think an order of magnitude better than we've ever seen. Uh, this is the densest result we've ever gotten. There's so much good stuff to go over. Like we're noticing great things. We've pointed out a couple of them. We don't wanna be staring at this wall of text for the rest of the video. So this will go up on our website. We'll link it in the description. You can check it out and let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, for now, great result here. And it makes me excited to move on to our uh, next test, which is a proxy for sort of agentic planning and reasoning. All right, so for folks, uh, been loyal watchers of the channel you'll be familiar with our maze challenge here we're going to ask it to navigate a maze and find the best solution to to get to the end while crossing no wall of course and the big question jacob is how complicated do we start with do we start with our canonical five by five i think we can bump it up to 10. we've 10. seen models push up to around 10. i'm not sure exactly what the max has been we're expecting sort of a uh, blowing the roof on the maximum here. We're also, we should note that because we are testing in the client and because as OpenAI noted this morning that these models are now actually really becoming more of LLM system, we might expect interesting strategies to solving this problem. It might run code, it might calculate the best result. And so that gives it a huge leg up on previous models, but we don't have a way of turning that off. So uh, we're gonna see how far it can go with the tools that it has. All right, so we have attached this textual representation of our 10 by 10 maze, as well as an image to give it the best shot of success here. And we also have some instructions, including the format we needed to output it in. Our tool will be able to check the final result and compare it to the best path. It has now rebuilt the maze in ASCII. So to Jacob's point, we're now doing a Python based analysis of the maze. I got high hopes here. I'm back to optimism. Okay. There's the legal path. Let's uh, put it in the tool and check the work. Let's find out. Success. Ooh, success. And now, now uh, show best solution. Is that the best solution? I would imagine. 
It is yes, it's very found well the done. Exact best solution. Oh, no, uh, it, well, yeah, I'm equivalent, equivalent yeah. to the best solution. So awesome. Uh, should we push it with a larger maze? I mean, I think at this point we might have broken this test now. And by we, I mean OpenAI may have broken this test by including these runtime tool use. Yeah. And I'm I'm struggling a little bit with ha what that actually means, right? Like in in terms of um, were some of those capabilities available to somebody who asked a previous model for the code or for the brute force solution and then ran it themselves? They were. But in this case, it does it all just from the prompt. It does it all. And then it gives you the final result. And we are moving into a world where tool use is going to become table stakes and will be integrated into all yeah. these models. Uh, so we're going to crank the number here. We've never seen a model accomplish a major size of 20. But yep. again, we, we do have tools in the mix here. So we kind of do expect this to succeed. But we will. We'll, OK, we're thinking about the 20 by 20 maze. It's thinking. It's verifying. <laughs> I mean, there it is. There it is. Yes. Nope. Nope. Hit a wall. Ooh. Hit a wall. It hit one wall. Hit one wall. This is amazing. I mean, this is the perfect output. We really got right to the limit, right? Okay. So we've run it through the gauntlet. We've seen our coding tests, our business logic test, our agentic reasoning test. I think, suffice to say, I think the claim of state of the art is broadly true. I think generally we saw it perform pretty well in areas where it could use tools and searches during runtime. Uh, and it seems like where it was able to take advantage of its own inference scaling. Whereas in the coding test, the way we did it, we had to be that verifier and send back the errors and send back the feedback. Um, and so this kind of vibes with the research that's going on that reasoners and frontier reasoners are best at things and inference scaling is best when there is a perfect verifier and when uh, the sort of path of execution takes advantage of that. Uh, so we're really excited to see trying codex and seeing it, uh, O3 in a sort of perfect tool use environment made for it is able to rise above and do the things that we kind of were expecting out of our coding test. But I think that is an indication that folks are gonna have to relearn these things. As OpenAI said this morning, that O3 is not just a model, but it's really a model system, an AI system. And so as more and more capabilities get baked in and as the behavior of the system adapts to the capabilities that are starting to get added. We, as users, are going to have to change how we're using them. And uh, we, as a channel, are going to have to update our tests. And we're expecting to see this trend continue from a lot of other providers and sort of peak at a GPT-5-like model that um, unifies everything uh, into one system. AI system, right? They've, they've yep. already seeded the term. They got us talking about it. So. Uh, exciting. I think the, the year is just getting started. We're only in April and we're already moving the needle. It seems like every other week. Uh, so I expect a response. You're going to see, and Anthropic's got to drop something at this point. They're not in the conversation uh, for much of anything right now. Gemini 2.5 Pro has crushed it on coding. So I expect Anthropic will probably be the next big release we look at, but you never know. OpenAI likes to surprise us too. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely be doing a deeper look into O3. We'll be comparing it to other models. We'll be yeah. doing a look into O4 Mini as like OpenAI's new workhorse reasoner. And so we're very excited to sort of test all of these models that are coming out and all the ones that we think will come out as responses. Uh, let us know, as always, in the comments what you want to see tested, what you think of this model, what's coming up in your own test. Uh, and yeah, subscribe if you want to follow along as we release these videos. Like the video if you liked it. And thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everybody.